Okay, welcome back to my video podcast on the future of business and technology. And today we'll look at how AI is used in sports and we look at how Seville Football Club is using generative artificial intelligence to really drive business processes in their own organization. And to help me do this, I'm joined today by Elias Zamora, who is the CDO of Seville Football Club. And I've got Shobit Vashni, who is the Vice President and Senior Partner for IBM Americas. Thank you. Lovely to have you with us. So maybe we can start by you giving us an overview of Seville Football Club. Yep. So Sevilla uh, Football Club is a football club. Here in the US, uh, call it soccer, but yeah. it's a football club. Uh, 130 years of history, one of the oldest in Spain. Yeah. Uh, very successful in the last 30 years in, the, in our uh, performance. We won seven times the Europa League. And uh, because it's very related with the youth that we are going to speak about the AI, we are our key success factor in the last 30 years, probably we can say that was the scouting. And uh, also we can say about Sevilla FC that it's a club that is very much into uh, technology, data for all the processes. So it is this combination of success, history, scouting and technology. So the, the people that follow me will have seen many examples of how I have talked about how AI and data is used in Formula One and football and many other yeah. sports. So it's always been a crucial part of it. And I guess when we talk about scouting, which is one of the use cases, we've watched Moneyball. Um, so this yes. has been around for a while. So I would love to uh, better understand how you're using generative artificial intelligence in, in your organization today. Yes. So this uh, comes already from a uh, previous history. So we have uh, done uh, big efforts in Sevilla FC, uh, as I said before, in terms of technology, in terms of uh, a strategic data strategy or a strategic data uh, operations uh, across the world entity, specifically in scouting and ana in analysis of the game. Uh, and um, we have reached a, a pretty uh, a pretty high state of maturity in the organization in, in such a terms, in the way that we could perfectly identify talent yeah. based on uh, numbers and performance. This is uh, something that we could perfectly uh, do it, but uh, we wanted to also identify talent in terms of uh, expert human opinions. Yeah. Why? Because we have uh, one of the largest databases in the European football yeah about uh, opinion of uh, scouts of football professionals about prospective players for Sevilla FC. We are speaking about near a million uh, reports of uh, scouting yeah. uh, with the opinions, not just with the number, but with the opinion that our experts have about players. This is a huge uh, source of information, but they are not numbers. And they can include things that have nothing to do with uh, numbers, for example. It's very difficult to uh, have some kind of sensor that measure leadership. Uh, it is uh, very difficult to have a uh, sensor that measure how you, the other, the other uh, players believe in you, how you can make better the others. This kind of things is difficult uh, to be measured by technology, but it's easier to be understood by humans. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be able to identify also players based on the opinion for experts. And to do so, we have introduced generative AI. We have created, together with IBM yeah. and with the University of Sevilla, a product at home, at this property of Sevilla FC, that uh, what it does is you write the kind of player that you are looking for. Yeah. For example, we always give the same example, tank center forward. Tank center forward, the generative AI understand what is the meaning of this. What is a tank center forward? It is a strong center forward that can really uh, contain the defense, that can play good with the head. Uh, that this is the kind of player that we are looking for in this example. And then the generative AI understand the key properties of such a player, yeah. such a kind of player, and then look in our million of reports in which ones of such a report appear such characteristics. 
not yeah. in a lexicon way, but in a semantical way. That is one of That's the right. big properties yes. of the LLMs and this uh, huge uh, natural language processing. Yeah. And in this way, we at the end of the day, we have a list of uh, players that are uh, that have the property that we are looking for, but based on the opinion of our expert. Yes. In such a way, the generative AI worked for us in unlocking the full potential of the human knowledge. Very good. And how is this working for you? Uh, this is a, this is a kind of a second side of the coin. So we have. Uh, First of all, I am the, let us say, the technology specialist, so I provide the technology for the export management. We have a different set of tools, and we, uh, with this different set of tools, for example, with the numerical, uh, with the num performance, purely performance, and categorical part, you select players. Then also you have another sort of information, that is the human-related uh, side. You also use it in order to identify players, and then you put it together, and being two different sources of information, yes. the idea is that you are much more accurate in the predictions. Mm. So you just identify players that have, have good numbers, let us say, and identify players that have good opinions mm. and put it together. And in, if you have good numbers and good opinions, yes. probably your decisions are going to be uh, more successful that without paying attention to the numbers or to the opinion. Yes. Very good. I'd like to bring you in, Shubit. So maybe you can give us an overview of what you see as the general impact of, of generative AI in the world of sports and beyond. I'm super excited and pumped about what we're doing with AI in the sports. It's, it's two passions coming together, right? Yeah. You you're love sports and then you're bringing in AI right in the middle of it and it converges at the fan experience for us. When you're trying to redefine what a fan experience is in 2024, you're looking at how do I get the highlights really quickly, given a whole game that just happened, I want to pick the spots that, that matter mm. to me, has to be in almost real time, there's a rush to getting that yeah. content out on social media. There's a lot of work that goes into translating that content into multiple languages and highlighting what is important for me. Uh, if you look under the hood and see the number of data points that go into making decisions like scouting, you can extrapolate from there on and look at when you're trying to predict how a player is going to perform in the whole tournament. This is an insane amount of data that has to be crunched together, and you're marrying structured data with unstructured content, and all of this is happening in real time. So the compute is, is required is very high. The large language models that we bring into the, into the mix, they need to understand the language mm. of each sport, right? Each terminology is very different. Bunkers in, in golf is a very unique word. You can just give us some examples of how the sports world for football is very different. So we need to adapt those. And then all of this has to happen within the trust that you have earned with your fans, right? Mm -hmm. So the decision making has to be very secure, transparent, I need to be able to go back into where I got this answer from, right? So there's a lot that goes into driving these kind of workflows. And then from a, a broader perspective, you take the decision making that you're doing with Scout, the same thing we're applying for other industries when you're looking at how do I pick the right stocks mm -hmm. or how do I do drug discovery. The problem statement is structured the same way. You have an insane amount of data, you have uh, structured and unstructured, and then there you have a domain-specific ontology. What we're doing with our uh, Instruct Lab takes that open model that we have from Granite, that we leveraged with, with you, helps us accelerate how do we adapt it to a particular domain, right? It's the subject matter experts that are training this AI that understands your domain, is being deployed in a trusted and secure manner, mm -hmm. and then you just get this huge productivity and fan experience boost out of it. So just generally very excited about the work that we're doing together with Sevier, FC, and all of our other clients with Journey of AI. Very good, so what was the process like working with IBM? What was the process like implementing this use case in the football club? And have you got any learnings that you can share? So anyone trying to go on a similar journey thinking I can use Gen AI in my organization, what yes. would be your top bits this of is advice? A good question. Uh, first of all, what you should have is expertise at home, if possible. Yes. So yeah. uh, this is uh, very important because it allows you, first of all, uh, to develop the question. You should yes. understand your own business. Yeah. Yeah. You should, the, the client is the one that has to identify which is the business problem that we, he wants to solve. Yeah. Then you should have uh, enough uh, knowledge 
scientific knowledge, mathematical knowledge, computational knowledge at home, yes. in order to uh, know that the answer to your question is generative AI. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it yes. is absolutely fundamental. Yes. Because if not, you are lost. You, you, know, you can know that you have a question, but you don't know even in which direction goes the answer. Yeah. This, first of all, this we had it in, uh, in Sevilla FC because we have one of the most developed data department yes. uh, in the European football. We have uh, uh, people specialized in machine learning, people specialized in software development, people specialized in data. So we were able, plus collaboration with academia, to understand that, okay, guys, we have a problem or we have a question that we want to solve, we want to improve. Then we know that generative AI, natural language processing, is probably the, uh, the direction that we want to use in order to solve such a problem. And then came uh, IBM. A IBM came through the client engineering uh, part of IBM. So they came to us because we were already well known in the, in the industry. They came to us and they say, okay, guys, we want to work with you. And we want, uh, we have these capabilities. And we say, okay, you have these capabilities and we have this question to solve and the idea of in which direction we would like to do it. What was the key? There were two key uh, elements in order to bring this to success. First of all, uh, the passion. So the people from, uh, the people from uh, IBM and, and my team, finally we were working together as a single team solving mm -hmm. this problem. This was, people were really involved from both sides solving this problem. The second one was the capacity to bring a team from uh, the beginning till the end, from business engineering till back-end back -end architecture. Yes. And convert it into a product, into a product that is a finally an application that you can really see how it works. Plus then, yeah. IBM Client Engineering uh, develop, uh, develop uh, a, first a first iteration of the product, yeah. and then my own team were able to put it full yeah. in production, connected to all the other uh, applications, and solutions of Sevilla FC. So this um, is a mixture between power, full yes. power of a thing, in this yeah. case that they even help, help us to come, plus previous knowledge and maturity of the yes. client, mm -hmm. and convergence and working together. Yes. Very good, anything to add? No, it is an absolute pleasure working uh, with you. The client engineering team has, has uh, got together a mixture of experts uh, to come work with you, and uh, the coaching that you provided and explaining to us how your business works, and uh, just the phenomenal work that you have already done with all the data, that just made things so much, uh, uh, so much better for all of us. But thank you for your coaching to the team throughout, and you've been a visionary in the space. Uh, truly appreciate the partnership you've had with us. Very good, so what's next? Next is already a direction that Sevilla FC start, uh, start uh, moving in the last two years. But uh, now with this experience in, uh, in Genetic AI plus uh, uh, the huge success, reputational success yes. of a Scout Advisor, yeah. is really empowering. So Sevilla FC is not just a company that tries to use uh, technology, data, That's right. AI yes. for our own purposes. Yeah. We are trying also to commercialize it, to share it with third parties in the sport industry. We already did it uh, in the past. Uh, we are the first club in Spain and probably in, the, in, the, in Europe that sell its own technology, commercialize right. our own technology, our solution yes. with La Liga, mm -hmm. with, the, yeah. with the competition plus also with uh, other clubs through La Liga, Latin America and Europe, yeah. uh, in, in a product called Transfer Tracker, but we want to keep doing it. Yes. So our idea is to work together uh, with IBM in order to, uh, to make Sevilla FC not just a football team, but a uh, consultant in terms of yes. um, data strategy in football or in a sport in general, and also tech a consultant in data, uh, technology, AI, in football from a club perspective. Wow, super interesting. This is yes. uh, the, what we want to do, and this is because also we are here trying to show that Sevilla, that a club cannot be, or can be a club plus also, together in this case with IBM, a tech provider. Very good. Excellent. So where, where do you see Gen I going in the future of sport and beyond? So I think uh, we're super excited about the future. And uh, Sevier has proven to us that uh, this partnership of sports with uh, the fan experience is brilliant, right? So a lot, a lot to come in this field. I think if you look at our large language models and the, where the space is, is evolving, I think multimodal 
models where a model can look at video and images and make sense of it. Uh, we are working with other sports, uh, uh, sports teams where we're looking at videos and generating and uh, ingesting them in real time and making sense of what's happening on the, on the field as well, right? So you start to augment other parts of what it takes to run an exceptional team like Xavier. Amazing. So this whole process end to end, uh, augmenting is the key word here, not replacing. So a scout advisor now empowered with looking at what 20, 200,000 uh, reports in, in real time and making sense and picking up the right insights. And that's going to have a phenomenal impact on where uh, sports take us, takes us. With the amazing. AI. Thank you very much for sharing this amazing Thank story. You. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much for having us on the call. Thank Vamos. you very much. Vamos, <laughs> <Sevilla>. <laughs> So anyone who ever wants to re-watch this conversation, simply head to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.